Ahoy! Today we're talking about two mechanics with the item that you see in the thumbnail, Benevolence, of which I think at least one is going to get nerfed next patch. While the item is Benevolence, what we're going to talk about actually has nothing to do with support. In fact, it has to do with multiple other roles that are specifically not support and kind of using the item against its intended purpose. You may already have seen the first mechanic being shown by FineOK, who made a video about it, as well as Sino, who's been using it. Shoutouts to Zelaria for being the one to point this out to me. But I wanted to take it a little bit further than what we saw in there. So what's the first trick? Buying Benevolence at the start of the game and then staying in base after the game has started. That way, the gold per 5 from Benevolence starts to tick and you get extra gold reaching 1550 gold quicker than you otherwise would. That then allows you to sell Benevolence again and buy any 1550 gold item of your choosing. I watched Incon stream a little bit the other day and somebody suggested that to him and he said it actually doesn't work and you don't actually get more gold, so I wanted to make sure that it's actually not just the base gold per 5, and it isn't. Normally you would reach 1550 gold around 17 seconds into the game. If you get Benevolence, you'll reach the same amount around 13 seconds into the game. This may not sound like a massive difference, but considering that buff camps spawn at 20 seconds, it is definitely a significant gap. You're going to be a little bit late to the camp itself, how much exactly depends on what item you're building first and if you're building and using blink as well, but depending on what role you're playing, this isn't even necessarily a massive factor. So, who can do this and how can they use it? Jungle, solo and with some increased difficulty middle lane as well. Let's briefly talk about how to do the start with these roles and then about what items you can get from that and how it can benefit from that. So the first case is the one where the solo laner does this, in which case they will typically have a, a tier 3 boots upgrade at the start and they will just run to the speed camp and then share all solo side camps with a jungle as normal. So they're basically just coming to speed a little bit late. This is even possible without blink. Maybe don't use your ability on the first camp in that case and just use it on the big hops instead of something. But either way, it should not be a major downside in any scenario. If both the jungler and the solo do this, you might run into risk of clearing a little bit too slow and missing some minion XP. At the same time, the fact that you have boots tier 3 from the start might offset that as well. Probably comes down to the exact picks and their clearing speed at that point. When the jungler does it, they don't require the solo laner to start on speed with them. The solo laner can do that, but the solo laner can also start on blue and get more pressure in lane that way, while the jungler just goes to speed on their own and then goes to the big harpies and then probably directly to middle lane because you don't want to give up too much pressure. The start gives you very high aggression potential with multiple build options, so you want to be in a place where you can contest things against the enemy. The third option is the mid laner doing the start, and this again is more complicated. The problem here is that it requires basically the whole team to be on the same page and doing the start. You're also giving up a fair bit of pressure for this start if you do it in mid lane. It is essentially the start that some mid laners in the SPL ran, where the solo laner starts on blue, the jungler and the mid laner start on speed, and the duo side starts on purple. Only that in this case the mid laner just runs by speed and quickly throws some damage on that and then moves to middle lane. The resulting problem is that the mid laner will neither have red buff at the start of the game, nor be in lane extremely early to build pressure through that. So mid laner needs to have a very strong level 1 to offset that or just work extremely well with the lifesteal boots. Anubis comes to mind. So what are the item choices that open up here? The first one for solo is Shoots of the Magi. This allows you to get very high lane pressure and also get some sustain. You could also go for some very early Reinforced Griefs or Reinforced Shoes, essentially a budget warding sigil. The problem is that you won't be able to get any talents, any potion, so you'd kind of have to offset that by having high sustain in your kit or getting teleport, which most soul laners currently don't prefer. On a physical solo, you could also get Ninja Tabai. Again, the problem is that you don't get any sustain items or consumables to use with that. An obvious benefit is that it's a much easier way to skip starter. That in itself, I suppose, would be a bit more relevant if Bluestone wasn't so oppressive right now. There are some other options like Silver Breastplate plus Shoes or Boots, Cloak of Concentration or Armored Cloak, but none of those really provide any significant benefits at the start of the game, so I don't think they are worth considering. And that brings us to the role that is, in my opinion, more effective for the start, since it's much easier to utilize and there are more effective options. 
The first one is the one that Sino apparently uses, which is Ninja Tabai. By building Ninja Tabai at the start of the game, he gets 20 physical power and 25% attack speed and has very high movement speed from the beginning, meaning he can clear camps very, very quickly and rotate around the map very quickly and then back relatively early and get his starter. This is a very risky and aggressive choice because you have no pots and you will have to take the damage from jungle camps, but at the same time, it's also something that can get you massively ahead very quickly. The option I went with here was Eye of the Jungle plus Combat Boots, Tier 2 Boots. I think the benefit of this option is that you get the increased damage to jungle monsters and camps, you get an additional 25 HP 5 and 10 MP 5. And I think that makes your survivability in early stages a lot better, it's a lot safer in case you end up getting in a situation where you're in some trouble and you have to play a little bit careful. You have 15% less attack speed and also 6% less movement speed, meaning your aggression potential is definitely lower against other guards, but to me personally the increased jungle camp damage is more important. This option also doesn't force you into attack speed boots, you can just get any boots at that point. Another option that is possible through this is building Bamba's Dagger, tier 2 boots, combat boots, and get an additional health pot. I think this may be worth it because I find having no option for pots to be one of the biggest downsides of that start otherwise, especially if there's any aggression happening in middle where you can't heal off camps. Last but not least, and this might be relevant for next patch, you can also go into Mannequin Maze plus Katana or Mace and still get Hand of the Guards and a Health Pot, which means the Hand of the Guards can kind of offset that you're coming out of base a little bit slower as well, probably is more impactful than that actually, while you also still have the option to get a little bit of sustain along with that. As a mid laner, assuming you're playing a mage, your options are pretty much the same as for solo, you're probably primarily looking at Shoes of the Magi or Reinforced Greaves. While you could get some options with extra pots, you probably want to have the movement speed to get to lane quickly, because otherwise you put yourself behind even more. For Hunter mid players, it is worth pointing out that this option also allows you to build Death Toll plus Tier 2 Boots, or again, Ninja Tabai. So there's a lot of extra room this start gives you for various builds, which I don't think is intended. And that is why I think this will likely get nerfed and maybe Benevolence will only start ticking once the buff camps have spawned or something because it does kind of allow you to go over the expected threshold of 1,500 gold at the start of the game. But beyond that, there's something else that I realized about Benevolence when I was thinking about this topic. And that is that Benevolence doesn't really have any limitations on when and how it's used. Right now we still have some builds that skip starters in favor of other items, especially in solo. Most of them are opting towards Bluestone, but I feel like Bluestone is going to get nerfed soon anyways and then we'll see what happens with that, and I think this strategy will still work then. If you didn't build a starter, you can buy Benevolence when you're dead. And you can sell Benevolence when you respawn. And the results of that are actually pretty interesting. So I did a little bit of an overview here as to how much it provides you with while leveling up. On level 5, you'll get 5.5 extra gold per 5 seconds. On level 10, you get 8 extra gold per 5 seconds. And on level 15, you will get 10.5 gold per 5 seconds. Now, we could look at level 20 here as well, but I don't think it's much of a point, because at that point you're probably looking to upgrade in most situations already. Considering that the base gold per 5 seconds in Conquest is 15, this is actually quite a significant addition. Now, we also have to look at the respawn time to know how much gold we're really getting if we're selling the item right after respawning. As far as I was able to find, every level that you have adds 3 seconds to the respawn timer. So at level 5 the respawn should be 15 seconds, level 10 it should be 30 seconds, and level 15 45 seconds. Resulting from that, the extra gold that you would earn by buying and selling benevolence would be 17 gold on level 5, 48 gold on level 10, and 95 gold on level 15. This should not be underestimated. That is equal to sitting in base for half a minute waiting for an item, which you probably hopefully don't do. It's almost equal to almost two wards, which could easily change the outcome of a game for you. And if we add the benefits from all these deaths together, then we would be at 160 extra gold, which would be a sentry and almost an additional ward on top of that. Now consider a game where things maybe don't go that well and you die more often, especially at higher levels, and this can easily be quite a significant amount towards the next item that you're building. Compared to the first mechanic, I wouldn't say this is inherently an issue because it requires you to do a relatively specific build by skipping a starter to even get this option. 
On the other hand, this doesn't really seem like an intended use by Hyrus either, especially because it also provides extra XP. Now obviously, it's not beneficial to die and get Belevolence, and if you're getting farm in lane, it's probably going to be better for you in the vast majority of situations. But the fact that it can be used that way may mean that Hyrus might want to change it. This could be done by just refunding the gold if you refund the item, but I think it's kind of hard for the game to recognize that because it's kind of separate from each other. Either way, I thought these were some interesting experiments with Benevolence that are worth trying out and some of them are very easy to do as well. So if you enjoyed this and you want to see more like it, click like and subscribe or I will go to my garage, hide in the corner, stare at my home gym and contemplate if it's harder for me to... Thanks to my patrons for making this video possible. That includes that Nick Walker, Dwayne Bannon, Lanta25 Green, Zilaria, Zed the Undead, Nevitz Jr., Rawas, Angel, Z Feroli, and everyone else you see here.